Hey guys, I wanted to make a video responding to a few of the comments uh, that we received in this this video, that last video I uploaded um, yesterday, last night, and uh, some interesting comments. Um, I mean, just to give a blanket statement of how the Jehovah's Witness culture is, and Jehovah's Witnesses and the re religion, the organization, you're not really supposed to even be watching material that could be viewed as what they call apostate material, anything that talks negatively about their religion, including their own like doctrines and beliefs. Even if it's like wrong from a biblical stand, stand, standpoint of what they believe, they're not supposed to even look at that their own, uh, uh, you know, opposing views on on those matters. Even their own leaders um, discourage them from watching, you know, what they call apostate material. Uh, there's a real specific video that I have in mind, one of David uh, Splain uh, from the 2021 Powerful by Faith Convention, where it's like a it's like a long video. It's part of a convention series. Either way. It's called uh, Put Up a Hard Fight for the Faith. So if you look at it, he's essentially conflating everything as apostate that is anti-Jehovah's Witness, uh, you know, with no regards to actual nuance. It's very just like a blanket statement and, and telling, you know, their own, uh, you know, the constituents, the members of Jehovah's Witnesses, oh, hey, you know, don't watch any of that because nobody is too strong. You can all be tempted. You know, just this like... A uh, subtle way of, of talking and discouraging members from actively looking into it. So it's interesting to even get like current JW members here. Anyways, if you look at this uh, first comment, it's from uh, uh, one two three Benito M, which says, you know, that I I got laid and from a Filipino girl talking about my fiance, and then now he's a master of theology. Uh, this here is not really even talking about the video. It's just an ad hominem. So, uh, you know, him being a current Jehovah's Witness, he's not actually looking at the facts of what I stated. Instead, he's attacking my person, my own situation, my life, which I mean, that's, uh, you know, you're in your right to do so. But uh, look at the. Uh, at the same time, like you are using the veneer of a empty TikTok account to attack ex JW members who are in the recovery process. So in reality, it's it's pretty, um, pretty, pretty sad. And it's funny because uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, they believe themselves to be like these true Bible scholars, right? They believe that, oh, they even the children. I remember growing up, I was told, you know, even you know more than those famous pastors. I remember preaching and then I was told like, oh, you know, you know more than any of the householders, any of the people at the door, you know, the actual what the Bible actually teaches. So that's something that that Jehovah's Witnesses are taught that they actually do know Bible theology more than your average Christian. Uh, but they have like this. They base their beliefs off of what the governing body approves. And the governing body is this ever changing group of men that live in Warwick, New York. And they're all white except one black guy. And they believe that, you know, uh, whatever they believe has to come through them. It's a proof through them. Any beliefs in their doctrines or any beliefs, any changes in their beliefs, like adjustments and things and new light has to be approved by them. Uh, they themselves say in the JW.org article titled, What is the Governing Body of Jehovah's Witnesses? It says right there that they strive for unanimous decisions. So that means that there's a certain amount of delegation and debate that goes into like these changes. So if you're having to do these debates and things, it's coming that's not it's it shows that it's not directly from God, right? Because if it was directly from God, it would be completely unanimous. So they have to do some convincing for it to be unanimous, unanimous. Which of course, that shows that it's completely human and, you know, it's not derived from God if there's room for debate. That's the, how I view it. Uh, they also mentioned that the, they themselves, that the governing body isn't inerrant, which means that they do make mistakes. In the February 2017 Watchtower, in the study edition, the article titled, Who is Leading God's People Today?, it says in paragraph 12, this verbatim, quote, this is what it says. The governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Therefore, it can err in doctrinal matters or organizational direction. So this means that they can make mistakes, which they have done in the past. Uh, so why should you be penalized for not following erroneous doctrines that they cherry picked and they approved? If they are able to make mistakes and why should you be punished for that?
It doesn't make any sense. Deuteronomy 18.20, right there, in the New World Translation, which is the Jehovah's Witness translation of the Bible, says, If any prophet presumptuously speaks a word in my name that I did not command him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. And then verse 12 later says, uh, at the end, you should not fear him. So, we're not supposed to follow false prophets. Je the governing body has made incorrect statements have changed their views on things people have died a result as a result of it for example uh their their views on organ transplants they used to say that was a disfellowshipping offense so P J jw's had died before for organ transplants but now of course we know that a lot of gw's do organ transplants that's something that is permitted by the organization so their views on that changed but people have died for no reason so again you know they are not to be listened to according to the Bible itself. Jehovah's Witnesses will say that, you know, those who speak ill of their religion, those are people who are trying to, like, lead you astray. Like, trying to replace your religion with something. They're trying to become your leaders. Like, it's some sort of conspiracy that, that people who've left the religion aren't just people like me who are recovering and trying to find solemn in my own form of faith, in my own form of Christianity, and my own peace. No. They basically want us to shut up. And, you know, in reality, I'm not trying to replace your faith. And there's nobody, there's no 99, there's no XJW uh, that will try to replace your faith. But in reality, uh, any faith that doesn't let you ask questions without fear of punishment isn't faith. That's like force feeding you an ideology. That's forcing you to believe something if you can't question it without fear of punishment. So the second comment is from What's Up 2023, where it says, the word Trinity appears nowhere in the Bible, nowhere it's an innovation. And I agree, the word Trinity, it, that doesn't appear in the Bible. But neither does 1914 appear in the Bible, the governing body, pioneers, paradise earth, publishers, Christmas, Halloween, ripped jeans, etc., etc. So JWs, Jehovah's Witnesses might say that these are Bible principles, that are concepts that come from scriptures. Well, the same can be said, you know, of the of the Trinity in reality. And in reality, the Trinity is a concept that you can actually base on the Bible versus 1914, where you're just kind of like cherry picking one text from Daniel over to another text with uh, uh, Revelation and doing, you know, algebra. It doesn't make any sense. And the difference is too, that no one is forcing you to adhere to the Trinity. You won't get in trouble for not believing in the Trinity. You can have your own views of God, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But when you're Jehovah's Witness, you have to believe what they believe or fear of punishment. You have to believe in those things, even though they aren't <laughs> directly stated in the Bible. You see, there's no lack of, there's a lack of nuance in the Jehovah's Witness religion. You're forced to believe these things. So in reality, the quote from uh, Richard Feynman uh, states it the best, where he said, I'd rather have questions I cannot answer than answers I cannot question. So would you rather be dogmatically told what to do or would you rather come to your own conclusions knowing full well where it's based off?